Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be, and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's up, fourth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series, and this is episode number 13. At this time, I would like for you to go ahead and complete number one and number two on your own. That means that you should have the worksheet with you. If you don't have the worksheet, somewhere around this video, you should see a link. That link will take you to a place where you can download the worksheet that you need for this video along with the other videos in this series. So at this time, go ahead and solve number one and number two on your own and press play when you're ready to come back with me and check your work. All right, everybody, welcome back. So first things first, you know what I like. I like to go ahead and identify the question type first. I'm seeing select all real quick, and I'm also seeing one, two, three, four, five, six answer choices. So what kind of question is this? It's a multi-select. Jot that down if you did not already. All right, now let's go ahead and mark up our problem. So this says, select all. That means that we are going to try all. Select all the models that have been shaded to represent fractions equivalent, which means equal to three fourths. All right, so we have a bunch of number lines here and we need to see which ones are equal or equivalent to 3 fourths. So let's start with A and let's go ahead and identify the fraction. Starting at the zero, let's count the total number of equal parts or jumps in this case. We have one, two, three, four equal parts. That means that for this one, our denominator is four and the amount shaded in represents the numerator. So let's count the numerator jumps. One, two, three. So this number line represents three fourths and three fourths is equivalent to three fourths. So let's mark A, but we're not done. This is a multi-select, meaning there could be more than one possible answer. For the next one, we've got one, two, three, four, five jumps. That means our denominator is five. The shaded part is one, two, three. So our numerator is three, which makes the fraction, which makes the fraction <laughs> three fifths. And three fifths is not equivalent to three fourths. You can even see here, they are the same distance between zero and one. And if you're looking right here, three fourths goes farther than three fifths. So no, it is not equivalent. We can also tell that the next one, it goes from zero to one, it's the same distance, and look, it stops way before three fourths. So we know this one is not equivalent either, but let's go ahead and figure out what fraction it is, just for practice. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. 
and there are one, two, three shaded in. Three, six, which is equivalent to half, which is why it looks like it's halfway between the zero and the one. Nope. All right, and also be careful when you're eliminating over here to not let it go into these little bubbles over there because we would not want the computer to think, oh, they meant to pick this answer. No, we didn't. We're eliminating them. Okay, next we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven total parts. That's our denominator. And we have one, two, three, four, four sevenths. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is take three fourths and four sevenths, and because they're not right underneath each other, I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply to see if they are equivalent. So four times four is 16. Seven times three is 21. So they are not equivalent fractions. And actually four three fourths is greater than four sevenths. So nope, we're gonna eliminate that one. Let's look at E, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total parts. That's our denominator. And we also have one, two, three, four, five, six parts shaded in. That's our numerator. And I think I remember that three fourths and six eighths are, oops, are equivalent. That's not really enough space. Let me do that over here. Three fourths, six eighths. Let me cross multiply to see. Four times six is 24. Eight times three is also 24. So because they generate the same products, that means that th these two fractions are equivalent. And we can also know that because three times two is six and four times two is eight. If we multiply both our numerator and our denominator by two or a fraction equivalent to one, we will get six eighths. So yes, E is correct. And I can tell right here that here's six eighths, which is equivalent to three fourths and F zero to one it lines up right with E. I can tell that these two fractions are not equivalent because look how much farther it is to get to where E is. So we can go ahead and eliminate F, but let's get the fraction just for practice with number lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 as our denominator. And we have one, two, three as our numerator. Okay, so the correct answers for number one are A and E. Let's take a look at number two. All right, number two, before we even get started, let's identify the question type. So this is, it looks like a multiple choice question because there's four answer choices. However, it is embedded into something where we have to complete a statement. So therefore, this is an editing task question. Write that in if you did not already. And now let's go ahead and read it and mark up our text and make sense of this question. It says, Leia tried to find a fraction so we got somebody named Leia trying to find a fraction with a numerator and a denominator that is equivalent or equal to two fifths. Her work is shown below. Okay, so here's two fifths and it looks like she added five fifths to get seven tenths. All right, but I know that if we're trying to find an equivalent fraction, just like we did for number one, it's not that we are adding a fraction, we need to be multiplying by a fraction that's equivalent to one. Two halves is equivalent to one because our numerator and our denominator are the same. Five fifths is also equivalent to one whole. That's good. One whole. But we should not be adding. What operation should we be doing here? Yeah, we should be multiplying them. So this is what's wrong right here. We should be multiplying. So complete the statements below to explain Leia's error. Fill in the bubble before each choice that is correct. So Leia made an error when she, well, they all say added two fifths plus five fifths. So we know that that is wrong. We know that she should have multiplied, right? Okay. So did Leia make an error when she added two fifths and five fifths because the sum is seven fifths? 
Well, this is true because when we're adding fractions, we do use addition in the numerator. Yeah, man. And our denom slides across. Our denominator is supposed to slide across, not be added together. So if she was trying to find them, it should have been seven fifths. That is true. If she was trying to find the sum, which means that we're adding them, but that wasn't what she was trying to find. She was trying to find a fraction that's equivalent. So that has nothing to do with adding fractions. Okay. So we can eliminate choice a, did she make an error when she added two fifths plus five fifths because she should have multiplied. Yeah. By a fraction. Yeah equivalent to one. Yeah, she should have multiplied by five fifths, which is a fraction that is equivalent to one. So this right here looks like the great answer. I'm not trying to eliminate there. That was my multiplication sign. Sorry. I want to keep this one because this one looks good. See, she added two fifths plus five fifths because there's no fraction equivalent. Well, that's wrong because we can totally find a fraction that's equivalent to two fifths. D, she added two fifths plus five fifths. That was wrong because she should have multiplied two fifths times two fifths. Well, if she did that, this is not a fraction equivalent to one whole. This is a fraction less than one and that's not okay. So we can eliminate that. We don't want to multiply. We could multiply two fifths times two fifths, which would give us four 20 fifths, but that would not give us a fraction that's equivalent to two fifths. That would just be multiplying fractions. So it is not D. The correct answer was what? B, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, go ahead and take this time to jot down any notes or to make any corrections to your paper. And then I'm gonna send you in the direction of some more videos to practice with this same skill. All right, everybody, as always, I'd love to point you in the direction of some more videos that can help you with finding equivalent fractions as well as comparing fractions. So first, the first link that I want you to check out is to McCarthy Math 155, and you're going to check out Unit 6. That's the unit that you want. Now, McCarthy Math 155 has 155 video lessons. So basically, every skill that you learn in fourth grade, there is so much practice to help you master those skills. Now, this is a membership, so in order to access the videos, you do need to be a member but I want to go ahead and give you a free trial. So enjoy seven days on me. Check it out. See if it's the right fit for you. And if you'd like to continue, you can easily become a member. And teachers, if you decide to become a member, this is something that you can share with your students. I walk through how to do just that in the tutorials tab. The next link that I'd love for you to try is to how to pass the math FSA. Now this was a series, my first series actually, that I created several years ago, back when the FSA was a computer-based test. It's not anymore, it's a paper-based test, which is why I created the math FSA bootcamp. However, the videos are still very helpful. They are still standards-based. I really encourage you to check out that link. Also, I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm also here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, if you could smash that like button for me, I'd be super grateful, not just for me, but because it allows kids to know that they should be coming to my videos. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth and fifth graders as possible. I really don't want kids to always struggle with math. I want them to have a safe place to learn. And that's exactly why I put out these videos. So if you could smash that like button, just know that you're helping so many people. Thank you so much. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I will see you all on the next episode. Can't wait.